U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland says he personally approved the decision to execute a search warrant at former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Now, the Justice Department has filed a motion to unseal that warrant. This is all in connection to an ongoing DOJ investigation into classified presidential documents that were removed from the White House. CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa has the latest details. Attorney General Merrick Garland took ownership of the decision to search former President Trump's Florida residence this week. I personally approved the decision to seek a search warrant in this matter. He also announced that the Justice Department has asked a judge to unseal the search warrant, handed over to the former president's legal team earlier this week when federal agents arrived at Trump's home. And the attorney general asserted it was Trump who publicized the search. The department did not make any public statements on the day of the search. The former president publicly confirmed the search that evening, as is his right. Garland's move to unseal the warrant punctuated a politically and legally charged week. As supporters rallied behind the former president, who declared the FBI search part of a witch hunt against him, left unsaid why exactly FBI agents were authorized to go in, and which documents they took from the residence. Since I became attorney general, I have made clear that the Department of Justice will speak through its court filings and its work. The search was part of an ongoing federal investigation into documents Trump took with him when he left the White House last year. CBS News has learned that former Trump advisors have been questioned in recent months about how the former president dealt with sensitive materials and classified national security documents during and after his presidency. CBS News confirmed today that this week's FBI search was preceded by a grand jury subpoena this spring, which led to a June meeting between investigators and Trump's lawyers to discuss exactly how documents were taken from the Trump White House. Robert Costa joins me now from Washington. We are also joined by Jamil Jaffer. He's the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute. Thanks for joining us. Robert, I want to start with you. I hear you've got some new reporting about the FBI search at Mar-a-Lago. What do you know? Well, the former president and his legal team have a decision to make tonight. Will they oppose the Justice Department's decision, uh, their move to unseal the search warrant about that FBI raid just days earlier at the former president's Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida. Uh, we can report tonight that the former president has not made a decision about whether he will oppose mm. the unsealing of the search warrant at this point. What we do know is that he issued a statement just minutes ago on a social media platform he's cooperating with, and he said he has been uh, working with the DOJ in every way, uh, but so far, that's all he has said beyond some uh, political attacks in that statement as well. A lot of people want to see what is in that search warrant. Jamil, why was Garland addressing the matter publicly so significant today? Out of these ongoing investigations before a grand jury uh, tend to be tend to be subject to grand jury secrecy. And so clearly, you know, Attorney General Garland knew uh, that this was going to be controversial. He said uh, he made the decision himself and uh, took responsibility for that. Um, and so him speaking out about an ongoing investigation is a big deal. Um, and the fact that the Justice Department actually wants the public to see what's in the warrant, wants the public to see what they got at the Mar-a-Lago residence, suggests they think that they've got something valuable and they have something on the president. So uh, this is a big move. Uh, the president, you know, out there talking about how uh, the search was illegal or improper, comparing it to Watergate. Um, clearly, uh, Mary Garland has thrown the gauntlet down and said, well, we'll show you our cards. Uh, now your turn. It is certainly unusual. The Justice Department does not uh, conduct investigations in public generally. Robert, I, I want to ask you, what comes next for Trump in the case? And what about the GOP? Where does it stand on all of this? So far, many Republicans have rallied to former President Trump's side, expressed outrage about the FBI search at his property this week. Uh, but some Republicans know that they're not entirely sure how this will unfold, mm. what's going to be the fallout politically and legally speaking. You think about a grand jury investigation, uh, it, it is something that is often behind public view. We have very little visibility into the evidence, into the testimony. We haven't seen not only the search warrant, but we haven't seen the affidavits, the foundational evidence that would have led to the warrant. And so Republicans know, and Democrats as well, that there's so much we don't know yet about this federal grand jury case looking into how the former president handled materials 
potentially sensitive national security classified materials from the White House. But we do know that it's serious enough that uh, a, a, an attorney general who rarely speaks is speaking out now publicly in trying to unseal a warrant to offer more information. And that says something right there, the fact that the attorney general is speaking. But, Jamil, there needs to be probable cause for a search warrant. So, you know, I'm sure they didn't take this lightly at all. What is the FBI being able to actually execute that warrant tell you about the evidence they may have against a former president? Well, Carter, it's a great question. And Robert's exactly right that, you know, this is an interesting way that this is playing out. Uh, look, what we know is that a federal magistrate judge determined that there was probable cause to believe a crime had been committed, that the FBI put in and the Justice Department put enough evidence in that affidavit, which we're probably not going to see as yet because the Justice Department hasn't asked for that to be unsealed, uh, but that it had enough evidence to suggest there was probable cause to believe a crime has been committed. Now, what could that crime be? If we get the warrant, we'll probably see what statutes are cited. So that'll tell us whether they're looking at violations of the Presidential Records Act, the Federal Records Act, or the laws and procedures governing classified information. What we believe we know is that these 15 boxes that the National Archives took a few months back uh, contained highly classified material. There are media reports that suggest it contained not only top secret information, which would cause exceptionally grave harm to national security, but sensitive compartment information, which goes sort of above and beyond top secret, uh, separate compartments that have more and more classified information. So if that's the case, that probably is enough to have probable cause to believe a crime might have been committed and allow that search warrant to go forward. And there's been a lot of talk about whether some of these documents were classified or not and whether or not uh, when former President Donald Trump was still in office, whether he declassified these documents, in which case the public would get a look at them. Uh, Robert, what are some of the other things we still don't know at this point? We don't know exactly what's in those boxes. Any inklings on what we're likely to see? Well, we know that what happened over the last few weeks was preceded by a subpoena. And this subpoena was issued to the former president and his lawyers back in the springtime. We confirmed that earlier today here at CBS. And after this subpoena was issued from the grand jury, you had a meeting in June at Mar-a-Lago between federal investigators and the president's lawyers, where they talked about the documents that were there, uh, whether they were presidential records. And some presidential records were taken out of the Mar-a-Lago residence. And they the question mark now is what happened between that June meeting that was not uh, that was preceded by a subpoena, but was not in any way an FBI search, per se. What what happened between June and August that then led to an FBI search in this investigation? And it's worth noting that this F, this DOJ probe of the former president and his handling of records is happening alongside a grand jury investigation at the DOJ about the events of January 6th and what led up to them. And while the president faces legal scrutiny, the former president does, by a district attorney in Fulton County, Georgia, by the Manhattan district attorney who has a criminal probe of the Trump organization and the Trump finances, and by the New York state attorney general, Letitia James, who earlier this week deposed the former president who invoked the Fifth Amendment, declined to answer questions about her investigation on a civil level into the Trump organization. So a lot of people right now are waiting to see if and when this search warrant will be unsealed. Jamil, what can we expect to happen next in the actual investigation? Well, you know, the next step would be more uh, search warrants, uh, more subpoenas potentially for the grand jury. Um, you know, obviously, the, the Trump organization is, is, is going through the process of negotiating with the prosecutors about what they will and won't give in response to these subpoenas. Um, and ultimately, the ultimate outcome, if, if the investigation is successful, will be charged being brought against the president or people in his circle. Um, and that's when we really see all the evidence the FBI has, a case we put on. The challenge, of course, for the FBI here is even if they successfully bring the president to trial and successfully even convict him, uh, you know, there are going to be these challenges. His supporters will believe that the entire effort was was uh, was politically motivated. And that's the biggest challenge. I think Merrick Garland realizes that. It's why he's now come out and said, I made the decision. Remember, Merrick Garland is a longtime federal judge on the D.C. Circuit, so he knows what the rules are surrounding this kind of evidence. Um, and he's saying, look, I took responsibility, and I want, I want the world to see what was in that warrant and want the world to see what we found. I think what you might be looking for is you look at what comes out of the warrant collection as they put forward that document would be where their documents they took this time under the warrant and where the documents marked with classified markings. And if so, did they have that top secret sensitive compartment information marking, which if that's true, will suggest that in fact the FBI found more classified materials at that site even after the, um, the investigation uh, or the National Archives had taken those 15 boxes away. Man, don't you just want to know what's in those documents? We know we're all waiting for that. Uh, but when you look a couple of weeks, a couple of months out, Robert, 
What are you going to be watching for as this case goes forward? And there's so much to watch on this case. You look at the decision Friday. What does the president, former president, do? Does he oppose this? Does he get into litigation? The New York Times a few minutes ago came up with a story that he is exploring the idea of opposing the Justice Department. So you could have a search warrant in the coming days unsealed, and we'll learn new information about why a former president's home, an extraordinary moment, was searched by the FBI. Or we could enter a litigious moment of this story where the former president's team is saying we're going to challenge this decision by the Justice Department and it moves on for an undetermined period of time with those kind of negotiations. Robert Costa and Jamil Jaffer, thank you both for joining me.